So hello, uh, I am happy that uh, you came and uh, the, we can make this presentation. Uh, I am Michal Koukny, I work in the core kernel team and the uh, domain of my interest are C groups and today I would like to tell you about memory C groups in particular about uh, reclaim protection. Uh, the contents of uh, the talk uh, at the beginning will be the very short introduction that should be sufficient for those who just want to learn learn about uh, it very quickly. Uh, then I will explain the implementation a bit. Then there will be a quiz to you, so that you feel engaged. And uh, then I will describe some experiments uh, that I did uh, with this uh, mechanism. And then we wrap it up. So, uh, the motivation uh, for this uh, protection uh, is often an undesired swap out uh, that affects uh, workloads that uh, work with large amounts of uh, anonymous memory and they want to keep it uh, resident uh, in the physical memory so that, uh, for example, latency is uh, satisfied or other uh, use case is uh, when we want to put some restrictions on the workloads, uh, but uh, together with that, we want also to utilize the system well. So some hard restrictions uh, are bad. And uh, 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 then they basically partition the system. So historically, there were some approaches uh, how to tackle this. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, infamous VM page cache limit uh, that exists uh, in C12 and older, uh, but it doesn't prove well because it's uh, hard to configure it, uh, configure it so that it doesn't break something else. Uh, the other mechanism that also was uh, supposed to help uh, is uh, uh, C group uh, attribute uh, soft limit, uh, but uh, that also uh, turned out to be really unpredictable for the purposes. Uh, so that's uh, why the current current approach, current iteration of the efforts are the protections. Uh, also, uh, another reason for the protections is that it may be difficult to, to put everything uh, that is competing with your main workload into one C-group. So, you can just put your important workload into the soup and uh, enable the protection on it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so what you need is uh, you create a C group, uh, you configure the, configure the value, and uh, I see that I uploaded all version of slides. So let me see if I... Okay. Uh, uh, sorry for the inconvenience. And I hope. Ah, okay. Uh, it's proper version. Uh, sorry, there is a mistake in the slides. Uh, so uh, what 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 you need to simply set it up is uh, that you create the C group, uh, you set the uh, respective attribute, and then you put your uh, protected task into the C group, and the problem is solved. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, this value is uh, yeah. Uh, this value should have been 300 and uh, but actually it's not solved because uh, uh, you don't know what is the group where you should put it you don't know what is the good value and uh, also uh, it might be problem to put the right uh, PID into the uh, target group. 
So uh, in this talk, uh, yeah, we will tackle uh, the location a bit and also we will talk about the value. So on the real system, you don't have such raw C groups. You are on, uh, in the system B environment. That means that there already exists uh, an uh, there already exists a hierarchy uh, with uh, uh, is uh, created for the services, and uh, you need to uh, you need to uh, be compatible with it. So uh, basically, you put your uh, workload uh, or you create a system B service, and uh, uh, here is an example unit file uh, with just the relevant parts. Uh, here uh, on the first row, uh, you put it uh, under dash slice, which is the name of the root uh, slice or root C group, and you enable the attribute memory row. And then you just uh, sit back and let the system do the work. Uh, if you do this, uh, you notice uh, that uh, there is a warning message in uh, syslog uh, about uh, compatibility translation between legacy and unified hierarchy uh, settings activated. Uh, and we should see debug messages. So if we watch uh, the debug messages, we see a message about memory max uh, minus one apply as memory limit. Mm, that is a bit confusing. Uh, actually, we didn't configure memory max at all, which is actually what we see here. Minus one is uh, the representation of the infinity. So uh, it, this is not so confusing, but it is suspicious because it doesn't say anything about memory low. And actually, uh, no protection would be in action, if we did only this, one more thing we need to do is to enable the unified C group hierarchy so that uh, even the controllers, uh, the memory controller, are attached to the V2 hierarchy. Uh, we put this into the kernel command line, and uh, yeah, eventually we should be happy. Uh, we can check it by uh, printing out the attribute value. So yeah, that's uh, the high level uh, point of view. And uh, now we will look uh, more into the details of how this works. Uh, here is a short introduction, uh, short introduction into the uh, memory management in the kernel. Uh, on the left side, uh, you see the data structures. On the right side, you see the algorithm. Uh, so uh, the memory is uh, divided into four groups. Uh, there are two uh, RLU um, lists, uh, least recently used lists. Uh, I will talk about them uh, later, uh, soon. Uh, then there is kernel memory uh, organized into slabs mostly. And uh, then there is a supply of uh, some free pages. So uh, the RLU list. Uh, basically, uh, uh, most of the memory is in these lists, and uh, they serve the purpose uh, to uh, to find out the uh, pages uh, that uh, are uh, actively used, and uh, to uh, learn which pages uh, are uh, not so active and could be uh, converted to some other kind of page, like for example, the free page. Uh, yeah, you could. Uh, See details about uh, this algorithm uh, in a talk from Vlastimil uh, Vapka. Uh, it should be in the recordings from this conference. Uh, yeah, so yeah, the free pages, uh, it, I'm not sure if it's visible on the screen share. Uh, it should look like a glass of water. Uh, and uh, that's actually uh, what the algorithm does. Uh, as uh, the memory uh, goes from the free pages to the uh, other use or other, uh, uh, the free pages are declining. And uh, once uh, they break the low watermark, a uh, kernel service starts uh, reclaiming the memory from uh, from where it's possible. Uh, we call this asynchronous reclaim or reclaim by case of D. 
and uh, if it is not sufficient or if uh, there is a high rise uh, in memory consumption and we cross even a minimum watermark, uh, we start a direct reclaim and that means that uh, the reclaim is basically done by the allocating task and it also serves, serves as a way of throttling. Uh, yeah, and this uh, is configured via a CTL attribute uh, VM mean free k bytes and the watermarks are derived from this single value. And uh, we can now look uh, how C groups uh, come into it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, on my screen, I see the lines are all very thin, so I hope you can see it better, the screen. Uh, what is important here that the data structures uh, we had in the previous slide are now split into individual C groups. So each C group has uh, its own pair of uh, other rules, or it's not a pair, but uh, for our purposes, it's a pair. And also the kernel, uh, uh, kernel objects are accounted uh, separately. Uh, what is also important is that uh, uh, tasks can only be uh, in the leaves. Uh, tasks are those uh, black dots. And uh, there is an exception that root C group allows also presence of uh, tasks, but uh, typically uh, those would only be uh, kernel threads. That's also uh, why we don't see any other rules in the root C group. We see only some kernel memory. Uh, another thing that I want to illustrate in this picture is uh, that uh, in this uh, uh, C group on the right side, we see that it has some uh, file LRU uh, pages, despite uh, the tasks are only in the leaves. Uh, this can happen uh, when that there are some tasks uh, that, or sorry, this can happen when uh, this uh, C group was still a leaf and uh, some tasks uh, were there, they dirtied the page cache, and uh, then they exited. Uh, the page cache uh, remained uh, still uh, unreclaimed, and uh, if we add a new child, so then there can still remain some uh, memory accounted to the inner C group, inner node C group. And uh, another uh, case that I want to show here is opposite. We can see that in the left uh, C group, uh, in the second level, uh, there is some kernel memory, although uh, there are no tasks running in this C group directly. Uh, this happens uh, when a child C group is uh, running and the tasks terminate and we remove the C group, but still some kernel objects uh, can be pinned and we cannot get rid of them. So those objects are reparented uh, to, the, to the parent of the removed C group. So this is uh, what the introduction of C groups uh, causes in the reclaim, yeah, uh, in the reclaim structures. Uh, now, uh, how, how does it affect the reclaim algorithm? Uh, I have uh, put here at the top the VM uh, mean free k bytes uh, 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 attribute uh, to demonstrate. Uh, that it represents the global reclaim. Uh, when, because we still uh, can get into the situation uh, where we need to reclaim the memory uh, globally. So in such a case, uh, uh, we, we can consider it that the root C group uh, is the target of the reclaim. But uh, it doesn't mean that we would look only into the root C group, but when, or into the tar target C group, it means that we iterate all uh, descendants of uh, the target C group. So in this case, uh, we would iterate uh, all split other use of uh, the descendants. But uh, there appeared a new pair of attributes. Uh, th those are limits for C groups. So now uh, we can 
uh, we can have not only the global reclaim, but we can have a reclaim uh, caused uh, by C group limit. And then the target is not the root and uh, it can be any, any other C group in the tree. Yeah, and here is a, a, a brief overview. Uh, so first, uh, we set that the first row, the first row in this table is uh, what we are uh, describing in the uh, original slide where it was not uh, uh, split. Uh, basically, we have the async uh, uh, reclaim uh, done by case of D and uh, uh, caused by the low watermark and the synchronous or direct reclaim caused uh, by min watermark and uh, done by the caller itself. For the C group reclaim, uh, Currently, we have no uh, asynchronous way of the reclaim uh, or uh, something similar to the case of D. Uh, but uh, the limits it themselves are similar to the direct reclaim. So when the allocating tasks uh, uh, exceeds the limit, uh, it uh, is reclaimed uh, on its, uh, on its uh, account. Uh, yeah, what, what is also uh, interesting to mention is that uh, now when we introduced C groups, uh, there can be uh, multiple reclaims running at once that uh, we, we can uh, reach uh, multiple limits in the hierarchy at once. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 Okay, I see there are some questions. So, there are some questions. So, uh, yeah, there exists uh, some, some kind of uh, asynchronous uh, reclaim even for the C group limits, uh, as is mentioned in the chat, uh, because uh, we, we cannot do a direct reclaim uh, every time. Uh, so, when such task uh, uh, breaks the limit, uh, then it can temporarily break it, but then when it's returning to user space and it's not, uh, it's uh, not uh, in a context that cannot uh, be uh, uh, cannot be put to sleep. Uh, it uh, can do some kind of deferred reclaim, and I hope I didn't confuse it uh, too much. And there is another question. Uh, if all tasks are in a leaf, is there any global reclaim anymore? Uh, yes, uh, uh, the the behavior should not change that much. Uh, with the slide back. Uh, if the all tasks uh, are in the leaves, so the global reclaim still happens, uh, because as I said, uh, uh, the reclaim does not uh, affect only uh, the C group uh, where it originates, the target C group, uh, but all descendants are iterated through. Uh, so even the leaves. So uh, global reclaim exists uh, even with C groups without no limits, because global reclaim is a thing that we need. I hope uh, that I, I don't think that actually, so the global reclaim is actually something slightly different than the recursive reclaim over all C groups now. Because, for example, f there is still global reclaim done by KSwapD, and it's just that the global reclaim done by KSwapD takes into consideration the system as a whole and not any particular C group. So, in one way, you can see it as a like reclaim of the whole hierarchy under the root C group, but on the other hand, in the implementation, it's actually slightly different, or it's different. Yeah, it's it's using different constraints. It happens from a separate thread and stuff like that. Uh, yes. Uh, what I wanted to uh, mention is that we, because we have the separated other use, so uh, we need to iterate through all of them to oh, okay. be like yeah, global yeah. reclaim. Oh, you are right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So in this sense, yes, in this sense, actually it is a recursive reclaim, but the set of constraints is actually different than like the individual constraint of the C groups yeah, and stuff like that. And yeah, also, yeah, the constraints. I, I guess the Daniel's question was more aiming at like the case of the and stuff like that. So 
yeah, it happens still from case public to global reclaim. Yeah, but actually I'm not MM expert. That's just my understanding. I see that MM experts are writing to the chat. <laughs> so let me allow you to continue. Yeah, so, uh, and actually, yeah, now in this picture, uh, you can see I already introduced the memory low and memory main attributes. And uh, yeah, uh, that's also why I was uh, re uh, uh, repeating uh, the importance of the iteration, because that's actually where the protection uh, takes place. Uh, when we, even if the target C group is, for example, the root C group, and we iterate through the uh, descendants, uh, we check what is their current uh, memory consumption and compare it with the memory low value or memory min. And if it's uh, below the protection value, we simply skip it in the reclaim and we, we go check other descendants. Uh, so this is basically the core of how the protection works. Uh, we are comparing the actual consumption of uh, the C group uh, with its protection. And uh, the consumption is hierarchic. So uh, when we compare uh, consumption of some inner node C group, it means actually we compare the consumption of all subtree with the limits. Uh, yeah, you may uh, uh, ask, uh, that basically, if we put everything under protection, that we destroy uh, reclaim. So this is the difference between memory low and memory min. Uh, with memory low, uh, uh, if uh, we have such a configuration that all C groups are somehow excluded, uh, that, and uh, we need we need to reclaim some pages. So uh, in th that case, uh, we do second round of the reclaim where we ignore the memory low protection and. Uh, uh, we do reclaim as if uh, there was no protection. But actually, there can be one more protection that's memory main. And uh, that is a hard protection in the sense that uh, uh, it, there is no second round for memory main. If we cannot reclaim uh, pages uh, and uh, we honor the memory main, uh, we simply uh, cause OOM. So memory main is uh, kind of... Uh, guaranteed by should be uh, used with uh, precautions. Yeah, uh, here I highlighted uh, the path in the tree. Uh, and depending uh, uh, from which level uh, this, this, the reclaim starts, uh, that is the target group of the reclaim. And then uh, in the path, there are the uh, descendants that are subject to the protection. Uh, now, now this picture will be simplified a bit. Uh, here, uh, it's uh, the, these columns of letters are the, just the C group on the path. So uh, here, I'd like to show you actually that the protection that we have configured is not uh, used uh, directly, uh, but it is applied uh, through some other constraints. Uh, the, the first three examples uh, show us how uh, uh, parent-child hierarchy uh, uh, apply into this. So in the first case, uh, when the target C group is uh, just a parent, uh, uh, we apply the protection uh, value as it is. Uh, there is uh, uh, there is nothing special about this. Uh, however, uh, if uh, we have a parent that is the C group uh, C, and uh, we, it, the, the, the current C group that's named C2 has a protection that is greater than its parent uh, with respect uh, to the path to the target. Uh, then the parent limits the protection of the child. So uh, you can also see that it has uh, this hierarchical limit uh, semantics. Uh, and uh, there is, However, uh, uh, not a special case. It's uh, uh, for it is rather consistent uh, that uh, if the target 
so Europe itself has uh, protection configured, it doesn't apply to the targets Europe itself. It applies only uh, from the, for the parents or uh, higher ancestors. So in this case, the C group uh, named C would be protected. This its effective value would be still 10 megabytes, even though its parent has one megabyte. But uh, be, be aware that it's different than the middle case, where there is one more level between the leaf C group and the target. Uh, yeah, so I said uh, it has this hierarchical behavior, the limitations, uh, but it can happen that uh, children together overcommit uh, the allowance from the parent. That is the second example at the, or the, sec uh, the second row uh, uh, of examples. Uh, it's just one example. There are the siblings C2 and C3, and they both uh, have protection of the megabytes. And in this case, it's not possible to fulfill it for both. So basically, it's uh, scaled down so that uh, the sum of the siblings uh, adds up to the uh, protection from the parent. And the weights, uh, the weights depend. Yeah, the weights depend. Uh, but we can think of it if uh, they are the same, then the weights would be also the same. Uh, if my, if my, I mean, if the C group consumption is the same. Uh, so it behaves uh, somehow uh, predictable. Yeah, a bit predictable. Uh, yeah, I said that when we iterate through the tree, we exclude uh, the C groups uh, whose consumption is under the protection. Uh, but there is actually uh, one more thing. Uh, if uh, the consumption is above the protection, we still mm -hmm. uh, I, I, we, we still uh, apply uh, some moderation of the reclaim uh, and here I'm I, I can't see it on my screen because I see on a small slide but so, I, so uh, here we have several curves for different protection levels and uh, on the x-axis is the uh, consumption of the protected C group so we can see that uh, the if there is no protection this is Giovanni um, I wanted to suggest that maybe you can zoom the slide using the the, ro uh, the, the, the wheel of your mouse. It, you can zoom in. Maybe you can. You see what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then with, yeah. with right right click of the mouse, you you move it around. Just uh, wanted you to be aware that uh, you can do that mm -hmm. because it, the, thank you. Now I yeah because uh -huh. they're they a little thin, but now I can, uh -huh. can see the. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I can move it, uh, but you uh, can move yeah, it I the, perhaps. Right click, right click of the of the mouse. You grab and uh, and move. You see what I mean? Right click, yeah, grab uh, and I, yeah, I see. I need uh, with the hand, with the hand, hand tool instead of pencil. Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I was experimenting with the right clicks and things and I got temporarily disconnected. Can I get confirmation from anyone that they can hear me and see yes, the slide? Yes, it works fine. Good. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I will perhaps just uh, yeah, uh, draw the line myself. So uh, if there is no protection, uh, uh, there is actually no modification of the uh, reclaim rate for the protected C group. If uh, there is a protection, uh, the, the reclaim rate is moderated uh, and it's part of a mm, hyperbole uh, so that actually it behaves like only the amount that exceeds the protection uh, is uh, reclaimed. Uh, the amount, not... Uh, yeah. Uh, so even if uh, the protection is only partial, uh, the reclaim rate will be slower. Uh, yeah, I, okay, so that was, that was the kernel part, it's an explanation. There's one more slide about, uh, I hope, 
about uh, how systemd, uh, what systemd does here. Uh, here uh, we can see that it takes uh, care of all the boring stuff so that it uh, creates the C group and also the ancestors if it's nested. Uh, it uh, enables the memory controller. Uh, it sets the attribute and then puts the task uh, that we uh, need in the C group. And uh, I want to uh, uh, emphasize that this happens uh, lazily. Uh, so that the C group is only created uh, when the service is started. And we can then also change the attributes at runtime. And uh, yeah, the cleanup, uh, it's uh, here. Uh, this is just to uh, show uh, the steps that the system does. Now is the part that I was looking for, but I'm not sure if it works. It's the quiz to, uh, to check uh, actually uh, uh, the understanding. And uh, uh, there are some. Uh, some gotchas in the configuration, and I thought it would be a good idea to uh, present them in a form of a quiz. So uh, here is the first uh, quiz question. Uh, on the, in the code snippet, uh, we have uh, what we configured. Uh, we have uh, the system slice, which is uh, the inner node uh, C group, uh, which has memory low of value zero, and then we have uh, Full service slice under system slice, which has memory low of uh, 100 megabytes. And the question is, uh, question is, uh, what would, or how, how much memory would be protected from the global reclaim in uh, in the full service? And uh, let me use the tool. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's ABC. So uh, let's say ABC. Uh, maps to one, two, three. And you should now be able to uh, cast your uh, votes uh, in the BBB tool. I'm seeing uh, eight people responding at it grows. So I will wait a bit more so that people can take their time. Yeah, so it's, now it looks rather stable. So you should see the results. Uh, the most is B and it is, uh, it is the correct answer. Uh, okay, so uh, I now highlighted the response, but uh, lost the results. Uh, yeah, so, so here uh, the child cannot uh, have more protection than the parent, and parent has zero, so the zero is a correct answer. Uh, let's go to the next uh, question. Uh, here is the same hierarchy, uh, but it's the opposite. Uh, parent has uh, 100 megabytes, and the child underneath has uh, zero. And let me restart the poll. Yeah, it's, uh, I think the number of responses stabilizes. So I am closing in three, two, one, now. So uh, the, mo yeah, I see that uh, several people answered the first option that it is 100 megabytes. And this is actually the only option that is not correct. Uh, but it's very confusing. Uh, that's uh, why it's uh, here. Uh, that of, uh, the protection in a child is zero, and it means that the memory in the child might be unprotected. So in a sense, uh, the answer number two uh, is uh, correct. But this has been also changed uh, in recent kernel. So uh, it can be also answer number three, something else, where the protection from the parent is inherited uh, to the child. Uh, but because uh, 
uh, it caused so much confusion. Uh, uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why it was uh, changed. There was also a workaround uh, how system D applies the configuration so that it avoids uh, this mistake. And uh, last, uh, yeah, uh, that was just uh, answers. The last question is uh, it's a bit uh, more difficult and tricky. Uh, so uh, on the first uh, rows, uh, we see that the system slice uh, has uh, the protection of 100 megabytes. Then uh, we start uh, our service. Uh, but uh, we check that uh, the system slice in its uh, subtree control attribute has no memory controller. Hmm. OK, uh, we said it's lazy. So then we set the property memory load to 100 megabytes. Uh, so then we check that uh, the controller is enabled. And we also see that the value of the child is 100 megabytes. So now what is the amount of memory that is protected in the full service. Yeah, so both are going, uh, yeah, it seems to stop. So three, two, one. Stop. So uh, most votes are for A, but actually it's another good chart. And uh, 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 in my perspective, correct, correct answer is to see uh, something else. Because uh, we enabled uh, the controller only after the service was started, it means that the the service uh, could have allocated some memory in the system slice, and only when the control was enabled, it was migrated uh, to the leaf uh, node, but not its memory was not migrated. So it depends uh, how much memory the service allocated before uh, the protection was enabled. Actually, the protection is still uh, 100, but uh, there is not the memory that we would protect. So that was the last question from the from the quiz, and now uh, we uh -huh. uh, maybe there is something in the chat. Uh, yeah, nothing relevant. Uh, now, uh, uh, yeah, uh, now it was uh, uh, yeah, beginning was practical, uh, then it was theoretical. So now back to practical. Uh, I did some experiments in order uh, to learn and determine uh, what would be good configuration for the protection. Basically, there are three approaches. Uh, you can do kind of overprotection so that uh, uh, you are always under the level and you basically turn off the plane. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I hope it's OK. There is a comment in the chat sure. by Andreas Farber. You may want to uh, comment on it. Uh, it says, I find this highly confusing. Why would a child be allowed to override and surpass its parents' limit? Doesn't that make the parents' limit useless? And this is also replied by Michal Otsko. Maybe you want to comment. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure to which uh, situation does this apply, but parent uh, cannot uh, Parent cannot uh, override, uh, sorry, child cannot override uh, parent's limit or parent's protection. Uh, it's like we, we can configure higher value, but the effective value that takes, uh, that is taken into account uh, during, yes, I see, uh, the, during the reclaim is, uh, is uh, restricted by the parent. Uh, Andreas, uh, uh, is it what were you asking about? Uh, yeah, so you were uh, asking about uh, this case. Uh,
Yeah, the, it's, uh, if the correct answer is zero, you can think of it that the child gives up the protection that it was given by its parent. But uh, I see it's confusing and it was confusing. So there is a different behavior in neural kernels where the child uh, inherits protection from the parent. Does it clarify your confusion? Okay, so we, we can get back to it later. I, oh, I hope that uh, others are not as confused as Andreas. Uh, yeah, so uh, the experiments. Uh, yeah, we, we can be in a uh, safe situation where the protection is uh, well above uh, the consumption, or uh, uh, we can be on uh, right around the border, but this is usually hard to do right because uh, the consumption may change, so we would need to somehow watch the current consumption and adjust uh, the protection. So the case that uh, may happen is that the protection is only partial. And I wanted to uh, examine the behavior of this partial protection. So uh, the experiment setup I had was basically a database server uh, running uh, uh, on a host where uh, some backup uh, was running uh, in background. Uh, the, the data that the database uses used uh, could fit into the physical memory, uh, but not uh, the the backup the data, the backed up data. Uh, and uh, I was using a sysbench benchmark uh, that basically uh, creates some dummy tables with uh, random data and then runs some queries. I I wanted to have it, this rather like a black box for me, so uh, I only that number of uh, queries should be limited so, because I didn't want to stress test it. I wanted just to have some traffic for the database and uh, measure measure the impact. Uh, yeah, but as I said, uh, I uh, wanted to measure the partial protection, so I needed somehow to determine the working set size. So that was the first part of the experiment, determining the working set size, and then uh, that I see. Uh, and uh, then seeing its impact. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, here I think uh, uh, it helps uh, that uh, I that the lines that are important are thick. So basically, the, uh, the, uh, this is just uh, in, inside what, what is happening in unprotected system in, in the two modes of operation that we have. Uh, the upper graph shows uh, uh, in the memory database where the database was configured that its data was kept in memory. The bottom is a database where it was configured to have only very little uh, buffer, so that it had to rely on the page cache. And uh, the, the thick lines that we see, uh, the purple one is the latency that was uh, measured by the benchmark. And uh, on the top, we see that the latency uh, kept uh, rather stable with some noise. And uh, the blue line is the memory consumption, total memory consumption of the database uh, CGU. We see that uh, in the pre-warm phase, uh, the consumption went up. Uh, it's not perhaps, okay, uh, I'm not going to zoom because I don't want to be disconnected again. Uh, so uh, the actual, uh, the size of the data that I used was around five gigabytes, but we see that the consumption is a double of that. That's because uh, the database loaded the data first mm, as a through page cache, but then it copied it into its anonymous memory. So we see it uh, it went through roughly the twice of the of all the data. And uh, then the yellow line is the memory consumed by the uh, backup job. And we see that it uh, grew and uh, as it started reclaiming, it reclaimed the page cache from the database C group that wasn't actually used because the important data were in the anonymous memory and uh, we did not, almost uh, did not reclaim the anonymous memory. So we see that uh, latency was still good. Uh, in the second case at the bottom, we see that uh, the database had to work only with the page cache. And uh, 
yeah, as we were competing for the page cache with the backup job, uh, the, the latency uh, went uh, too high. So this was just a uh, uh, quick uh, demo what uh, was happening inside the uh, demo uh, illustration. Uh, now, uh, okay, I uh, did some, uh, well, uh, I will skip this. Basically, somehow I determined the working set size and I watched, uh, then I watched uh, the behavior with protection, various protections uh, respect, with respect to the uh, working set size. So uh, at the top, we have the case when there was no pre-worm. So during the benchmark, the pages used had to be folded in. And at the bottom, we gave the database server a chance to pre-worm. So we, or we can th think of it like that it was running for a long time before the benchmark started. Uh, there are four behaviors. Uh, two of them are basically constant. That's the page, the green page cache case at the top, and we see that the latency was always too high. Uh, basically, it means that uh, the unprewarmed, armed prewarmed database uh, uh, performed very poorly uh, because uh, it was uh, still under the competition with the backup job. Uh, so I, I consider this case not interesting. Uh, the second uninteresting case is the yellow, uh, sorry, the purple line or the purple dots at the bottom that is uh, purely in memory database where we can see that it performed always good uh, regardless of the protection value. The interesting cases are the uh, combinations where the we had the page cache database, uh, we can see the green dots at the bottom where uh, here, the letters PC actually mark the estimated working set size. So we can see that as we were approaching protection uh, to the working set size, the, the latency got better. And when we were above, when we had the protection well above, the, the working set size, basically we disabled protection in that here, uh, the latency was as good as with the uh, anonymous database memory. Uh, yeah, uh, similarly, it, or similar, I would say interestingly, uh, it was also visible on the anonymous uh, memory database that was not pre-warmed, that the protection helped uh, to keep the latencies low. I want now to compare this. So we see there are uh, two outliers, I would say, the constant behaviors and two behaviors where the protection helped. When, now I want to compare this with the swap out amount that we had. And uh, yeah, uh, we see here uh, that if we watch just swap out, the protection somehow helped in all cases that the swap out uh, uh, went lower as the protection increased. But uh, I want to point out here that we see that the swap out actually doesn't correlate with the observed latency by the benchmark. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, here is uh, yeah, some uh, remarks about the experiment that it, it was just one single uh, use case. Uh, it uh, was very simplified. It, everything happened just read only. Uh, what I learned during it that actually the settings of the database buffer size serves as a good estimate for the working set size. And uh, yeah, I'm going a bit quicker because I want to show you one more thing before the end of the talk. And uh, I, uh, when I had this data, I was interested uh, what impact has the protection on the, actually on the complementary, on the unprotected size, uh, unprotected uh, backup job. Uh, so here, uh, again, on the X axis, you have the protection of the database, but on the Y axis is the throughput of the backup job. And uh, at first, it's uh, rather counterintuitive that the more protection we put on the database, the the bigger throughput the, the backup job uh, can attain. Uh, but uh, I, at first, I was confused with it. Uh, still, I I did not look too much into detail into it. But I think what we see here that actually uh, 
uh, in the first case, the throughput is always uh, the, the green throughput uh, is always low, and in the bottom case, the uh, the RAM database uh, the throughput is always high, and those are actually those two uh, extreme cases in the first graph, and uh, it means that thanks to the protection, we avoided uh, competition on the I/O. So because we were able to keep the database uh, in memory without uh, without uh, using page cache too heavily or to the page cache being reloaded from the device, from the same device where the swap was. So we actually, uh, etch, uh, sorry, uh, not the swap, where the backup job was running. So we achieved uh, uh, even benefit for the backup job. But uh, again, if we have just the in-memory database, even without protection, uh, the backup job uh, still runs well. So that was one interesting fact from the experiments. Uh, so it's time to wrap it up. Uh, what I want you to remember is that uh, the the setup itself is uh, simple. If you switch to the uh, unified hierarchy and uh, you are aware of the gotchas with the parent uh, child configurations, that uh, we can have multiple times of reclaim depending what the target is, we, the C groups. Uh, we showed uh, how the uh, protection values are spread uh, in the C group hierarchy. And uh, yeah, uh, I am happy that uh, I was able to uh, run, up, run some experiments to, the, to illustrate the effect of the protection and to learn about this perhaps uh, complementarity with the I.O. So that is the uh, end of uh, my talk. I apologize because I uh, didn't watch the chat uh, in the last minutes. So if there are any quick questions. I don't think there are any currently. And we are actually already five, six minutes over time. But it's not a big problem because the next session is actually empty. So there is no problem if anybody has any last question then i guess we can still use a few minutes uh so vastimil babka is asking whether we can ditch the page cache limit uh yeah the page cache limit uh, doesn't exist in c15 yeah okay i because originally i wanted to say it was in sleep 12, but then I realized that there is sleep 12 SP5, so uh, yeah, sleep, sleep 12 is still a thing. Yeah, so I guess no more questions, so I'll s thank you for the talk, Michal, and uh, we will meet again uh, in about an hour. Yeah, so bye.